Take a chance. You're listening to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. <laughs> I am very pleased with your progress. You have planned this well, Pope Innocent. The great and mighty King of Silas listens to you like a puppy dog listens to his master. Steer him, Martin, but do it slowly. With ease. A Silas has the motor of a sports car but makes wide turns like a bus. He readily conveys his confidence, for sure. However, I sense he still reserves some doubt. I dare not assume he doesn't. Then be more convincing. Instruct your flock to adore him. Make him the centerpiece of your homilies and say weekly prayers on his behalf. Such reverence will swell his heart. Ah, but vanity is the quicksand of reason. People's love won't be enough. Not for him. That's where you're wrong. A silence like any man or woman longs for love. In his case, he will see the people's love as a sign from above. And if he doesn't, then make him believe it. Yes. I'll have the audio hologram technology installed in the chambers. Silas will hear the voice of God for himself. Perhaps this will coax him further. Add a little light show and he should fall for it. <laughs> How much longer before we reveal his true destiny to him? This is something we cannot do. He would never accept it, no matter what chicanery we use. But by the time he realizes what he has become, it will be too late. <laughs> New Kingdom Radio Theater. Olivia, is that you? Oh my god, hi, how are you? Honestly, pretty bummed out. What about? I was just reading about how the US government hired Nazis after the Nuremberg trials. Oh my god, I know, can you believe it? I'm kind of on a sad binge too. I <laughs> I stayed up late last night reading about the influenza pandemic of 1918. God, that was devastating. I think I know the book you're talking about too. It's on my list. I've just been really hooked on documentaries right now. Have you seen that Flat Earth documentary? No, no, but I did watch the Fire Festival documentary. It was, it was insane. <laughs> Almost as insane as the fact that slavery is still legal in the U.S. I'm... I'm so... Is that a baseline? Hi, I'm Brooke. Are you someone that likes consuming media that feeds your wildest fears? No, no, wait, wh you Are can't... you a consumer of the macabre and disturbing? You can't just drop something about slavery like we that. We talk all that and more on Things That Keep Me Up at Night, a podcast for those that like to commiserate and learn more about things that we promise will make you lose sleep. Um, uh, we're, uh, we're available on all platforms, and you can find us at TTKMeUp uh, on Instagram and Twitter. New uploads every Friday. Join in on the horror. You were kidding about the slavery thing, right? Pope Innocent met with Silas to share some disturbing prophecies with him, as well as tell how the people were praising his efforts. He told him. Silas, 
It is quite extraordinary how you have become so influential in the minds of the people. They even include you in their daily prayers. I think I say with great authority, you have won their hearts. Asilas was not greatly moved by this and told the Pope the only thing that mattered to him was to do as God commanded. The Pope used the moment to spring a series of audio sounds through an exotic technology known as an audio hologram. A godlike voice spoke to Asilas in the halls of the Vatican. It said, the love from my people appears in signs which often misunderstood, but offer a glimpse of paradise, such as in the euphoria of victory throughout the history of our wars among men. The trumpets of valor reverberate among the clouds above their heads. And the celebrations that welcome their heroes coming home is a relative paragon to that which waged you in heaven. Asilas' heart filled with rejoice and smiled enthusiastically, and the Pope exulted in the king's delight. Wasting no time, he fed instructions to Asilas, saying, The red horse is creating great division among the Chinese people. The bio-warfare you sanctioned has torn the public's trust in their government. This is good as they refuse to accept Christianity and the Catholic Church. Perhaps now, they might be more receptive of the Gospels. You should continue this and have the Red Horse speed things up some more. Make them suffer. And what of the innocent? What if there are some Christians among them? Should I annihilate them all and make the good people suffer the fate of the guilty? I believe you have done this before, have you not? I have, Holy Father. And it was a terrible mistake to do so. This time, I will send a warning to the Christians in the area and tell them to leave before the attack comes. Those who leave will be saved and those who do not will die. Well, that is noble of you. Asilas contacted Lord Shelley and directed her to meet with the generals to discuss an update to their strategy. They were instructed to warn Christians in China through underground means to leave the areas they planned to attack. Once the so-called innocent people were given enough time to migrate out of harm's way, they moved to fully engage and destroy China from within their own cities. The war between China and the American Empire had begun, with the Chinese taking many casualties by detonating nuclear bombs on their own soil to stave off the Americans. As the grind of war escalated, both sides suffered great losses. Sir, Lord Chill is reporting some advancement outside of Kunming and Nanning. It doesn't appear the Chinese want to detonate any more nukes on their own soil. We might be able to exploit this pause. I agree. The global media has demonized them more than me for the first time ever. I guess vaporizing their own people to get some American soldiers didn't pan out like they hoped. In the court of public opinion, anyway. Sir, my sources in the Middle East have reported, just in the last hour, that the tunneling efforts are already under the Israeli territory. We think at the rate they are moving, it will only be a matter of weeks before they are directly under Jerusalem. 
I think it is safe to say that is their target. Since they didn't do anything under Jericho, Alcabot, Jabbar, or Mitzpi Yergo. This confirms they are gunning to destroy the Holy City, Lord Orb. This is very alarming since we are still no closer to finding a way to stop them. That isn't entirely true, Your Majesty. Have you been withholding information from your king? Of course not, sir. But there are some experimental technologies we've been testing since we drove out the Drax. They are a combination of alien and human tech. One of them is believed to be able to initiate seismic activity. Initiate seismic activity? What does that even mean? It means we might be able to surgically create earthquakes. How would that help us stop them? We are trying to avoid seismic activity, not create it. No, sir. I know it sounds like it would be totally destructive, but it actually wouldn't be. I mean, if our scientists are successful in refining this technology. And if it fails, we would be the ones destroying the holy city instead of saving it. This sounds crazy, Jeremy. I know it does. It is incredibly risky. Which is why I didn't bring it up before. But we think we might be able to do this. We just need more time to improve the technology. I'm afraid if you can't get it done within a few weeks, it might not matter. Well, if Shelly keeps pushing the Chinese back, it might buy us more time. We've been monitoring the digger, and we noticed that it stopped when the fighting in China intensified. While the nukes were a terrible blow to both us and them, it did make the Chinese stop the digger. If we push them, sir, I think it will make them stop it more. I'm not sure why, but we need to look into this correlation more. Agreed. Send this intel to Shelly. Get on that technology orb and monitor the digger to see if our efforts in China make it slow down or stop. Get back to me when you have something to report. Dismissed. General Pershing, call in the Spartan Alpha and Beta teams and have one group move into Changsha and the other move into Wuhan. Will they be deploying the Trishul, Lord Shelley? Yes. This will cause the populations in those cities to become chaotic and unstable. But they won't depose any of the government officials, right? Likely not. But that isn't the objective here, General. The Spartan teams will force Beijing to move further south, and we'll move our underground forces in the Henan region north into Shanxi. Then, call in the Spartans in Gansu to lead our forces into Sha'anxi. But aren't we pushing upwards towards Beijing? Yes, but there is a lot of real estate to cover, General. Our directives are to force the Chinese to engage in a zigzag pattern and strain their military. It seems counterproductive, don't you think? We could be effective Those if... are our directives from the King, General Pershing. But we also have to continue dividing the people. We were effective in the beginning, but it has been sliding. The king wants us to move a little faster. It probably has something to do with the stealth digger in Jordan. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It isn't my place to question our orders, General. It wasn't always so, Lord Shelley. What is that supposed to mean? It means you used to have more influence on the king. You could talk to him, reason with him. But now it's like you're not Let even- Let me stop you right there, General. You are way out of line. My talks with the King are none of your concern. I meant no disrespect, Lord Shelley. I'm just concerned about our own forces, that they won't become too strained with this zigzag strategy as well. We've lost a lot of soldiers already. The European reserves don't fight as hard. They're getting wiped out relatively quickly. The European reserves hate America and detest the King. They fight for us, but many do not believe in the cause. I understand your concerns and are duly noted, General. You have your orders. Dismissed.
King Osiris isolated himself for some time, even from members of his own high council. He spent a great deal of time with Pope Innocent XIV discussing the happenings in his kingdom and the war efforts in China. Things were moving too slow for Osiris, but the Pope gradually made him understand the importance of patience. Osiris, troubled by a resurgence of night terrors and apparitions in his daily life, confided in the Pope that demons had always haunted him. But the Pope dismissed these troubles as merely his overactive mind playing tricks on him. After the Pope insisted that Silas's mind was fine and did not need to seek counsel from anyone other than him, Silas called Gabriel to meet with him outside Vatican in one of the king's many residences in Rome. Well, well, well. I'm so used to getting orders from you, Silas, but a request for a private meeting. Now that hasn't happened in a while. What is it that you want? Something doesn't feel right, Gabriel. Things are off their axis as of late. Hmm. Too bad you're only now realizing things are not right with the world. You missed the ball a long time ago, I'm afraid. I'm being very serious, Gabriel. Something is definitely not right. The Pope seems... I don't know. Like he cares too much about me. It doesn't make any sense. <sighs> you are a blind king. And do you know how dangerous it is to be a blind king? A person who leads when he doesn't see where he's going. You want to know what isn't right? You aren't right. You've never been right. And when someone like the Pope actually shows you he cares about you, well, that just makes alarm bells go off, doesn't it? You're so used to people wanting to kill you, that when someone wants you to succeed, it becomes a topsy-turvy world. <sighs> Tell me something. Do you think the Pope is being genuine? The guy performs miracles, heals the sick, goes around saying he speaks on behalf of God. Are you buying it? <laughs> no, of course I don't. But boy, he sure became powerful in a hurry, hasn't he? The first American Pope ever in history. Right as the American King becomes the most powerful man on the planet. Seems rather convenient. <sighs> it's clear you and I are not on the same page here. Take me to see Dr. Ezekiel. It's been too long, and I don't want anyone to know I'm going to New Eden. Silas, I'm a very busy man. Come on. You're talented at bargaining. Give me incentive. Gabriel. <sighs> Fine. Come here. Your Majesty, uh, I wasn't expecting you. This is a great surprise. I know, it's been too long, Doctor. But I really need to speak with you. And I don't want anyone to know I am in New Eden. <clears throat> I guess I'll be outside waiting. I see. Uh, what brings you here, sir? <coughs> <coughs> Nothing feels right. Something is very wrong with things. People around me. All this love and attention I get from the Pope doesn't feel genuine. Well, from what I know about you, sir, is if something doesn't feel genuine to you, it generally isn't. But what is it the Pope wants from you? Have you asked him this yet? He says he wants me to be more successful. He says the world is out of balance and I have to... You, you have to what, sir? I know it's been a while, but you know your secrets are safe with me. Always have been, always will be. He says I have to wipe out half the world's population. Maybe more than half, I'm not sure. Me and some of the lords in the High Council. <coughs> oh dear. That simply sounds awful. 
The Pope said this to you? Why would the Pope want you to wipe out half of the world? <laughs> that seems very unchristian like. I know, but there are all these signs and all these prophecies, Doctor. I, I wouldn't even know how to explain them. <coughs> <coughs> Dr. Ezekiel, are, are you all right? <coughs> Doctor, uh, should I call an ambulance? No, 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 sir. It isn't necessary. <coughs> <coughs> I, I haven't been well lately, but these coughing spells don't usually last very long. <coughs> Maybe I should call you a doctor anyway. <coughs> sir... If you do that, people will know you are here in New Eden. Don't... don't bother with it, really. I'm fine. <coughs> you don't sound fine to me, Doctor. What, what I need to do is rest, honestly. Ugh. I am very sorry. Your Majesty, please forgive me, but I have to lie down now. <coughs> Maybe we can continue this discussion a little later. Uh, will you be staying in New Eden at all? N no, Doctor. I have to go now. Uh, but get your rest. Please feel better. And I'll come back again soon. I, I promise. Well, uh, okay, sir. <coughs> However, I will say one more thing before you go. Trust your instincts, sir. They have never let you down before. Lord Shelley, the Spartans calibrated their trishules to the specifications you ordered. But as a result, something very strange is happening. Strange in what way, General Pershing? People in the Shanxi province are fighting amongst themselves. I've never seen anything like it. It's like they're possessed. They're not possessed, General. They're merely enraged. Enraged? At what? We were expecting them to fight our forces with everything they've got. And being so outnumbered, I admit I have concerns. But Lord Shelley, they're fighting amongst themselves killing each other indiscriminately, it seems. I, I, I don't understand it. Good, then our calibrations worked. They're behaving exactly as we had hoped. We? I'm confused. What are you talking about? I'm sorry I've had to keep you in the dark about this, General Pershing, but there are some things I am not at liberty to discuss, even with my generals. The Trishul has been upgraded. We can do far more in controlling human behavior with it now than before. And this civil uprising in China is proof that our efforts have paid off. You mean the trishul can make people fight amongst themselves for no reason? I thought it made people hunt down Satanists and evil people. I, I, I'm not understanding this. The trishul has been evolving ever since it was invented, General. And each time it has, the whole world has changed. Now, we're refining it yet again, and soon, we will be able to make any group of people fight each other. To the death. You've been listening to The Rise of King of Silas, Episode 37, Uncivil Unrest. Starring J.V. Torres as King of Silas and Beals. David S. Deere as Pope Innocent XIV. Fergus McOsker as the Voice of God. Shane Maester as Lord Anna Patricia Shelley. Austin Beach as General Pershing. 
Jeff Ellis as Dr. Ezekiel, Alex Olson as Gabriel, Stephen Fisher as Lord Jeremy Oreb, and narrated by Sergei Brezhnikov. This episode features the song The Snake by Taste of Tea. Download the music of Taste of Tea on Bandcamp.com today. For more information about the cast, the music, or other contributors to this production, please visit us at www.theriseofkingasilas.com for a full list on our Season 3 episode page. And now, a word from our podcast friends. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel. I'm Holly. And we are the host of Murd Up, a murder story podcast. It's just me reading murder stories to Daniel that he knows nothing about. Nothing at all. Like Jon Snow. So I'm just like, uh, what? And are you serious? And a whole lot more. It's one case per episode, and it comes out every Monday. You do not have to be a True Crime fan to enjoy. That's right, I'm not. But yes. I, uh, I enjoy it. But if you are a True Crime fan... That works too. There it is. Murder Up Mondays. MurderUpPodcast.com. See ya. Peace. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2020. And stay tuned for episode 38. Hey, Billy. Why do you look so down? Aw, Dad, I got a computer, a PlayStation, and a barn full of iguanas, and I'm still bored. (sighs) Gee, Billy, when I was your age, I would read lots of stories in pulp magazines. Oh, with stories of weird adventure and fantasy, horror, satire, and lots of action. Wow, that sounds great, Dad. Yeah, I sure wish there was something like that right now. (laughs) There is Daddy-O. Who are you? I'm Dr. Mary Von Roxbrocket, host of the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour. And now there's... Yeah? Twisted Pulp Magazine! <laughs> What's that, Doctor? Why, it is a return to greatness! Available on all your digital devices! That is what it is! Look! Whoa! Dad, this looks awesome! Exciting and, dare I say it, very unwholesome. You definitely have that right, my good man. Ha ha! <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Mary! My pleasure, Billy. And just between you and me, I am not sure that this man is really your father. Bye! Dad? Uh, just read your Twisted Pulp magazine, Billy. Twisted Pulp magazine! Available! In dark alleyways behind meth labs everywhere. Or at digitalvaudeville.com. That is D-I-G-I-T-A-L-V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E dot com.